Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Facebook Aquila flies again. FAA drone registration fallout continues. And Drone ID Aviation Rulemaking Update. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AEVSI. Facebook has completed the second flight of its Aquila drone, which it hopes to use to provide internet connectivity to remote areas of the world, and this time the aircraft landed safely. The one hour and 46 minute flight concluded with a smooth landing at the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. The company learned some lessons from the first flight, which ended with the drone being damaged when it impacted terrain. The Aquila was modified by adding spoilers to the wings, which helped to increase drag and reduce lift during the landing approach, incorporating hundreds of sensors to gather new data, modifying the autopilot software, integrating new radios for the communication subsystem, applying a smoother finish on the plane, and installing a horizontal propeller stopping mechanism to support a successful landing. The flight included lengthy test points at constant speed, heading, and altitude to measure the airplane's drag. The aircraft structure was also heavily instrumented with hundreds of sensors about how Aquila's shape responded to flight in real time. The aircraft landed autonomously on a 500-foot circle of level gravel. Aquila has no landing gear per se and lands instead on Kevlar pads glued to the bottom of the engine pods. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The U.S. Coast Guard is looking for a small UAS to use on its Legend-class national security cutters to enhance the performance of these systems. Among many missions, the cutters are used to intercept suspect vessels, patrol coastal waters, and undertake homeland security and counterterrorism missions. The service will evaluate different platforms under a draft RFP that was issued in the spring. Malawi and UNICEF have launched an air corridor to test potential humanitarian use of UAVs. The corridor is the first in Africa and focused on humanitarian and development use. It is centered on Kasangu Aerodrome in central Malawi with a 21.5 nautical mile radius and designed to provide a control platform for the private sector, universities, and other partners to explore how UAVs can be used to benefit communities. Engineers at MIT have developed a drone that can stay aloft for up to five days. The design team says that the aircraft can loiter and provide long-duration communication support. The UAV, resembling a thin glider, has a 24-foot wingspan. The vehicle can carry 10 to 20 pounds of communications equipment while flying at an altitude of 15,000 feet and weighing in at just under 150 pounds. Drone manufacturer Delta Southern UAS plans to convert a vacant commercial property into a drone manufacturing facility in Clarksdale, Mississippi, eventually bringing about 200 to 300 jobs to the region. The company plans to convert the vacant building into a factory in which its line of drones can be built. The company produces aircraft that are targeted to commercial uses, such as agriculture, oil and gas, power line inspections, and SAR inspections. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. For those hobby drone or model aircraft pilots who had to register their UAV with the FAA a year or so ago, there is now a way for you to remove your information from the FAA's registration list and get your $5 back. But it's not as easy as it was to register, and it will take some time to have your information purged from the list, as it apparently all has to be done by hand through the United States Postal Service. The FAA has posted on its website updated information regarding the small UAS registration and marking interim final rule as a result of the recent decision by the U.S. Court of Appeals. The court's decision invalidated the registration requirement as it applies to certain model aircraft that meet the definitional and operational requirements provided in Section 336 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act. Owners of model aircraft which are operated in compliance with Section 336 are not required to register. Owners of all other small unmanned aircraft, including newly purchased unmanned aircraft not operated exclusively in compliance with Section 336, 
remain subject to the registration requirement. The FAA continues to encourage voluntary registration for all owners of small unmanned aircraft. The first meeting of the UAS Identification and Tracking Aviation Rulemaking Committee on June 21st through the 23rd advanced key policies of concerns to the FAA, industry, and law enforcement. During this initial meeting, the ARC considered issues such as existing regulations applicable to drone identification and tracking, traffic management for drones, concerns and authorities of local law enforcement, and potential legal considerations. The group developed some preliminary questions and identification parameters and reviewed a sample of existing identification technologies. The group's membership represents a diverse variety of stakeholders, including the unmanned aircraft industry, the aviation community and industry member organizations, manufacturers, researchers, standards groups, and local law enforcement and other officials. The ARC will continue to meet as necessary to develop solutions that function at federal, state, and local levels. The ARC's next meeting is planned for July 18th through the 19th, 2017. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.